So I would say we can start um, now uh, with, uh, with the first uh, presentation. So overview of part three and its main changes by Professor Kapos. Um, to me, and I think in, 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 a, in, in general terms, Professor Kapos barely needs a presentation, an introduction. Um, so he's, um, he's currently a professor at Khalifa University, um, where he's leading the structures group of the civil Instru infrastructure engineering department. Uh, well, he was previously also at Imperial College and uh, City University in London and also at uh, Thessaloniki. Well, he is a world-leading researcher and consultant in the fields of structural engineering, uh, a lot on bridges and seismic designs of structures, however, in general. Uh, when I was a PhD student, my thesis was on bridges. Um, I remember very well uh, the first papers uh, or some of the first papers I started to read were by Professor Kapos, so he's for sure... Um, uh, one of the perfect persons to to lead this uh, this research and and this uh, new part of the Eurocode, um, and as you can see also in the in the in the in the short CV. Apologies to all of you because we had to shorten the CVs so that they could fit uh, a slide. Uh, he has also done. Um, he made his contribution to a number of uh, committees and working groups uh, on bridges, but also specifically on the Eurocode Eight uh, Part Three. Uh, so, um, Rita, instead of doing the, the 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 presentations of all the the, the speakers maybe i would stop here the, in my my presentation and then we would go back um, uh, for each uh, whenever each presenter would start their presentation okay thank you so professor kapos i'm going to stop sharing good afternoon everybody many thanks to uh, rita for leading the organization of these um, uh, fantastic uh, webinars and uh, also thank you uh, thanks to Ricardo for the kind um, introduction. Um, I had the uh, duty and the privilege, I would say, to lead the uh, so-called uh, Project Team 3, or more formally SC83, uh, which is the working group that basically wrote uh, the third part of um, uh, the new uh, Eurocode 8. And um, um, I, what I'm going to do is, um, if you like, to... Um, to spoil the plot for the <laughs> lectures that will follow, because I will reveal right from the beginning which are you know the highlights, the most important parts of um, in each clause of the new of the new Eurocode, and then each of um, uh, the colleagues of this uh, very strong um, uh, team uh, will have the chance to present in much more detail what I will show very very briefly. Um, I will assume also for the uh, sake of uh, time that you are more or less familiar with the current um, Eurocode 8 part 3, so there's not a new one, that's the current one, which uh, uh, to which we, all of you uh, should have access. It is um, uh, its main characteristic, as you may see um, on, uh, on my screen, is that um, the real uh, uh, the real, um, the really useful information, or most of the really useful information, comes into the informative um, annexes, and this is indeed one of them, on the things uh, we had to address when we started um, uh, drafting the new, uh, the new Eurocode Eight um, uh, Part Three. A, a couple of comments to give some context. I mean, why we had to change the things that we uh, changed. The current code is intended to be performance-based and even displacement-based. Um, uh, it has some flexibility to accommodate the large variety of situations that arise in practice and in different countries. And uh, actually, this uh, this holds for most of um, uh, most of the Euro codes. It is an advantage because of the flexibility, but it is also the major weakness in the sense that you are trying to keep everybody happy, which is, believe me, it is not an easy thing. We have seen this uh, during the development of, um, of the code. Uh, the current code is logically structured, but on the admission of uh, its creators like uh, my distinguished colleague and friend, Professor Paolo Pinto, it is missing the support from the extended um, uh, use. Okay, the normative part covers only the material independent um, uh, concepts and um, rules, and then the the real stuff, the details for concrete structures, major structures, and so on, they are given in these informative um, uh, annexes. A major, of course, problem is that for a number of reasons that I'm not going to discuss now, it had um, very limited application. I would say, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, uh, primarily more in academic studies than in actual design projects. But on the other hand, 
it has inspired to a certain extent at least a number of um, uh, national codes on uh, structural interventions and so on like the greek um, uh, code in which i had also the chance to have some rather significant involvement and certainly in the italian um, uh, in the italian code so in this respect it was um, an important code now let us go to the to the forthcoming to the uh, the new one if you look at the uh, list of contents, the, it looks similar and dissimilar in the sense that you are starting with the standard um, uh, standard clauses, scope, normative references, terms, definitions, and symbols, and then you go to the main uh, parts, basis of design, what Paolo will present um, uh, later on, information for structural assessment, always an important thing. I mean, how can you assess uh, and how can you carry out an analysis of a structure if you don't know the structure to a sufficient uh, degree? modeling, analysis, verifications, and then the design of structural intervention. And then you have um, in um, uh, bold um, uh, letters, in bold uh, fonts, you have the, the, new, the new clauses. So these are the new clauses. And you see these are the, uh, these have evolved from the previous informative annexes, but now they're part of the formal code. This is a very, very important change in my in my opinion. It is not any formative annex anymore. Uh, the what I will do for a, a measuring structure that I'm assessing or indeed retrofitting or upgrading as some we also uh, call it. Uh, what I'm going to do with a, a concrete structure, a, a, a composite structure, a timber structure, and um, and so on. Okay, so these are very important clauses, and these will all be presented by really the specialists in the field, the people who are more or less the ones that drafted the biggest part of um, of this code. And then this um, uh, design of structural intervention, which, by the way, I will be presenting later on after Tatiana introduces the analysis. Um, uh, Closes, it is um, a merger of the old five, uh, the causes five and six, which were very short and we didn't see any, any real reason for keeping them as some um, uh, separate ones. And of course, this is the document. Uh, let me make this laser pointer. This is the specific document I'm uh, talking uh, uh, about. It is the ENQ version. Okay, so this presentation, and I understand that all the other presentations are based in the on the ENQ version. Of course, we are expecting a number of comments for the time being. I don't know how many comments, and then we will deal with these comments, and we will come up with the final uh, final version of the code, which will go uh, go out for uh, voting. Now, in addition to the main clauses, uh, clauses 1 to 12, we have, as usual in the Eurocodes, a number of uh, annexes. All of them are informative. One is on preliminary analysis. One is supplementary information for concrete structures, and then for timber structures, for major structures. And there is also something that, uh, I, unless I'm mistaken, you cannot find in the other parts of um, the code, uh, a series of very nice and useful flowcharts for the application of, um, of this standard. Okay, I should pay credit, of course, to let me call it a dream team of uh, these uh, people who have uh, really <laughs> contributed uh, uh, enormously to the creation of this um, uh, document. But in addition to these people, uh, most of whom you are going, actually all of whom you are going to see uh, later on uh, today, we have uh, we had significant contributions from the SCA chair, uh, uh, Professor Philippe uh, uh, Bis, uh, uh, and. Um, this is, of course, not over. This is a still ongoing um, uh, procedure. Uh, but at the at this stage, the uh, Eurocode, or all actually Eurocodes, including Eurocode, they are handled by a management group. So we have a management group wherein I am a member, which primarily, uh, but not exclusively, includes the, the leaders of the various um, uh, teams. And the main contributors, as far as our part is concerned, apart to Philip Bises, um, uh, Dimitri Lignos, who is uh, going to present the steel provisions, and also the people from uh, working group uh, three, the, uh, the timber um, uh, structure. Basmo Frajakobo was the leader, but Ivan Jongo will uh, be presenting later on the work, the very useful work they have done. Uh, this is one of the flowcharts. Let me skip it because, uh, first of all, it's a kind of difficult to read, and then I want to save some time. So the main part of this um, uh, presentation is, of course, on the key changes in each uh, chapter. I will very briefly, as briefly as I can, I will introduce these uh, changes, for example, in the uh, clauses, in the basic um, uh, clauses, the standard uh, clauses, the uh, important um, uh, additions or changes are the, uh, the scope, okay, so that uh, 
the scope is extended to, to bridges, which is in fact uh, very, very uh, important. Uh, as uh, probably you know, uh, the existing code does not talk about bridges um, at all, which was a major omission. Uh, it, well, it is the use of experienced uh, personnel. Okay, this is not perhaps so important. By the way, these are the, the basic uh, <coughs> clauses. Uh, you can see them also here. Uh, some interesting aspects of terminology, I'm always kind of sensitive to using the proper terminology. The existing code, if you have noticed, it uh, apparently because it was influenced um, uh, mainly by American documents, it was using the American terminology, capacity demand, uh, is a very well-known terminology. Of course, this is not Eurocontent terminology, strictly speaking. So now you will see that in the code, where instead of capacity, you will uh, read about resistance, and instead of action effects, uh, you will, uh, uh, instead of demand, you will see the action um, the action effect. So this is Eurocontent, but still, and we realized that we had for displacement or um, uh, deformation, you cannot uh, say really resistance. Uh, so we use capacity and demand in the case of um, displacement and um, deformation. And of course, um, a, a real nightmare for uh, code drafters is uh, always harmonizing the symbol, especially if you are not talking about uh, just one uh, Eurocode, but we are talking about uh, a number of new uh, Eurocodes that are, uh, are forthcoming. Um, a very important uh, part, uh, which will be later presented by my uh, good colleague, uh, Paolo Franchini, is the basis of design. There are several things I will try to be brief, although I have um, uh, several slides on this, but I, I will try to be brief. One change was that um, it was felt that uh, the, uh, the option of a the uh, limit state of full operationality should be added. Of course, I'm not expecting that too many people will use it, but it is there as an option. Then, of course, the uh, regarding the verification for the various limit states, this is a very interesting difference of existing structures as opposed to, to new structures. It is that we are very fine for the near collapse um, uh, limit, um, limit state. Okay, so this is one important thing because uh, in a new structure, very, very briefly, in a new structure, if you design for the significant damage limit state through the ductility and the capacity design and all the uh, special measures that, that you are taking, you are making sure that you are also satisfying the uh, non-collapse um, uh, requirement, okay? But the, the opposite does not hold, okay? So in the case of um, existing structure, we are starting from the near collapse and then we take it, I mean, we discuss with the client whether um, uh, they would like uh, some additional uh, verification. The seismic action for its limit state, of course, is um, uh, defined in part uh, one one, and a very interesting difference, uh, a very uh, interesting change that has been um, uh, made in this respect is that the uh, previous importance classes with which uh, all of you that have used or are using uh, the current code are familiar have been replaced by what is called the consequence um, uh, classes. I will very, very briefly discuss them because I'm not sure that they will be covered in the other parts of the, in the other uh, lectures in this uh, webinar. Uh, when we started drafting the document, the, the background document for um, the Eurocode 8 Part 3, we realized that there was um, really some uh, significant scatter in the nomenclature of the uh, different limit states. Uh, the in a, a Eurocode 8 part one and Eurocode 8 part two, these are the old, um, um, the current um, Eurocode part three, the US code, the FIB code. You see that they're using um, different names for uh, basically the different, um, uh, the different performance um, requirements. Um, very briefly, these are the consequence classes, uh, the new consequence classes that have been introduced in the new Eurocode, uh, the EN 1990. Uh, you can read them from here. There is some subdivision um, uh, allowed um, in the case of, uh, of buildings. And the idea here, uh, just to make also a link uh, with uh, the actions um, uh, part, which is not uh, formally a part of this um, uh, webinar. The idea is that as a function of the consequence class and of the limit state that you are going to change, you are selecting uh, the corresponding combination. For example, uh, consequence class two with the significant damage, which corresponds actually to the 475, the, the well-known um, uh, reference seismic action in the current uh, code. And then what? Then when you go to the seismic action itself, uh, which is described by the new response 
Gaussian uh, spectra that I'm um, reproducing um, uh, here. This uh, basic parameter, the spectral um, acceleration corresponding to this uh, reference earthquake, is multiplied by a site amplification and topography amplification factor. These were presented in uh, enough detail in the, in the webinar on uh, part one one, and then they're multiplied by this uh, delta factor, which is represented the consequence classes. Okay, uh, one, uh, another novelty which was, um, if I remember correctly, suggested by the bridge, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, cohort, uh, by Telemachus, Palangiotakos, and others, was to distinguish between the secondary elements, which have been discussed in previous uh, uh, webinars, and the non-critical elements, which can be neglected in modeling and verification, and they can be easily even heavily damaged as long as they do not endanger primary elements. And the, the typical examples here come from the bridges um, uh, sector. So these can be the abutment back walls. Uh, so this is a typical C type ab abutment. So this is the back wall and the shear keys. Uh, for example, these are the exterior uh, shear keys. Um, another also very interesting. Um, in my opinion, change is the possibility of having a global verification as opposed to the traditional member by member, critical section by critical section verification, which of course is just an option. It can be used only in conjunction with advanced nonlinear modeling, basically uh, with uh, pushover um, analysis, with nonlinear static um, uh, analysis, including uh, strength uh, deterioration. And it is and so long as it is complemented by local verification for all the non-simulated failure um, modes. This is part, uh, this is a little bit not completely uh, clear. Hopefully it will be perfectly clear when the final version is available, but it is useful for major buildings uh, to do something like this. And it is also useful for um, uh, reinforced concrete frames or steel frames when they are uh, together with, um, uh, when they include major inputs, which have um, a very important um, uh, contribution to their resistance. Regarding clause five, which is the information for structural assessment, is uh, well, there have been quite a few changes. I uh, will uh, leave Paolo to explain them in more uh, detail. Uh, we are um, uh, defining the knowledge level separately for the geometry, for the details, and for the materials. They do not have to be unique over the entire structure. Uh, of course, uh, having uh, Paolo in the group means that. Uh, there will be some probabilistic formulation, even a simplified one, uh, like um, uh, the total number of um, members that you have to check uh, to, to have the corresponding knowledge um, level, minimum average or uh, high. And you see the, the values of the various uh, coefficients here, depending on what is the level of the survey. Um, we have introduced, if, if you recall in um, my first uh, or second slide, uh, in, there is an annex on preliminary analysis. So in this annex, uh, uh, we are uh, giving some guidelines how you can carry out a relatively quick, but not too quick uh, a preliminary analysis, which is not mandatory, but it is encouraged because it can inform this, <coughs> the searches or the surveys that you are going to carry out in, in the structure. The old confidence factor, you remember the CF factor, has been abandoned. And nowadays we're talking about the uh, gamma RD factor, which depends, of course, on the knowledge um, level. Very important and uh, after a very important change after a lot of discussion was the use of mean values uh, for both the existing and the added uh, materials. Practically, we have made um, an effort and we succeeded to um, a significant extent uh, to use um, uh, almost exclusively mean values in this part of the Eurocode. Uh, there is uh, still the option of using characteristic values for new materials if a new structure is built to resist all the seismic um, action. But uh, I am uh, predicting that most of uh, people and uh, the software that um, will accompany this uh, code will be using uh, mean values to have some consistency along the entire assessment and the retrofitting um, uh, procedure. Um, I see that uh, time is passing faster than I thought, so I will not. Uh, uh, I will not say. I will not discuss any details in analysis, in the sense that there are no some drastically new uh, new things in uh, regarding uh, the analysis. Of course, we are using mean values. Uh, of course, we are putting more emphasis on nonlinear behavior, and of course, we are retaining, uh, for practical reasons, the force-based approach, the Q-factor method, making sure that the uh, Q-factors are really uh, uh, conservative. Uh, we're, we're not encouraging this, but uh, uh, as you may know, there is a huge 
demand by the practicing engineers, please keep the Q-factor approach because this is the only really uh, simple one. So we kept it and these are the values that we are uh, recommending. The displacement-based approach can be uh, uh, implemented either through a, an equivalent linear analysis a procedure, which is already in the existing code. So no need to uh, discuss it further or indeed through some, uh, through some nonlinear static analysis or through some nonlinear response history analysis. We have included uh, some very nice uh, constitutive laws, as you can see here, without uh, strength degradation, with strength degradation, and so on. And the engineer may use them in uh, carrying out their uh, nonlinear analysis. And the verifications, as I already said, can be carried out either at local or um, at um, a global uh, level. Uh, just, uh, close uh, seven is the design of structure and uh, intervention. So this is something that I will be covering later on. So let me skip this all together. There are no uh, really impressive changes, but there are some interesting things to be uh, discussed. So let's keep it for the time being. Then as far as reinforced concrete structures are concerned, my feeling is that the philosophy has not changed. But all the equations, and uh, we should give credit particularly if I, if I may make this uh, reference to the University of Patras group led, uh, led by my <coughs> distinguished colleague and friend, Mike uh, Fardis. <coughs> they have updated on the, on the basis of a very uh, big databases that they have set up. They have um, updated all the uh, nice uh, relationships that they have developed for the capacity, for, for, well, for the resistance, I mean, and for the deformability, for the um, uh, deformation capacity of their uh, reinforced concrete uh, members for all, practically all cases. For example, for continuous rib bar, for lap splice bar, even for smooth bars, which of course you can find the, in an existing structure, whereas you will not find them in a new structure and so on. So there is, if you like, um, a, a full updating of this, um, uh, uh, of this clause, but there are no philosophical, in a sense, um, um, uh, changes. The verification of limit states is done uh, typically in terms of the formations, as you can um, uh, see here. And of course, there are uh, resistance uh, uh, models, and there is also an annex uh, uh, giving some supplementary uh, information. What about steel and composite structure? Well, this is uh, a complete, well, it, it is a completely <laughs> refurbished, if I may use them, the word um, uh, chapter. It was developed basically after our uh, project team ended its work for the simple reason that uh, although it was a, a, a dream team otherwise, the, we lacked the expertise in steel structures and in timber structure. So um, the task group five of a, a working group too, but primarily Dimitri uh, Lignos. Uh, they have helped us enormously in um, uh, writing this um, uh, chapter with some uh, support from uh, Philip Bis as uh, well. Uh, there is no informative uh, annex and overall it is uh, different. It's much more in line with the current state of uh, the art and I mean both in the US and in uh, Europe and the rest of the world than the previous um, uh, document. But um, uh, due to the lack, uh, due to the paucity in the uh, uh, state of the art itself, there is not much detail on uh, retrofit and uh, design. A more or less similar situation with um, uh, timber structures, except perhaps this one was not so one man show as the steel um, uh, structures um, uh, clause. It is a new clause uh, written by the uh, uh, colleagues in working group um, uh, three. It's a brand new material. It, uh, timber, as uh, you uh, know, it was not covered. It is not covered in the current um, Euro uh, part three. The structure is a bit different from the other material related clauses in the sense that it, there is a lot of emphasis on condition assessment, this five factor, which relates to how good is the condition of the um, uh, various uh, wood or timber uh, members, and also the classification of the timber structural elements, uh, diaphragms, frames. Uh, these are some of the timber frames that are covered by this uh, clause. Uh, the analysis basically force um, uh, based with special emphasis, of course, on modeling of timber diaphragms. And they are detailed and uh, quite complicated, I would say, but um, I understand uh, according to the state of the art, the resistance model for diaphragms or carpentry joints, dull type joints, and uh, so on. And the verification can be based either on strength or on drift um, uh, criteria. Now, regarding masonry, 
Uh, I have a lot of material, but I will try to be really uh, uh, laconic. Uh, I will just focus on um, on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, that there is, uh, uh, for the first time, sufficient information for modeling these uh, these type of structures. For example, as you can see here, there are some nice nonlinear models. How you will uh, uh, mod uh, constitutive laws? How you will model your peers? How you will model your uh, uh, spandrels uh, uh, with piecewise uh, laws uh, for deformation relationships like this? Of course, a global model is defined when diaphragms are rigid or stiff. If you don't have rigid diaphragms, you cannot use the global model and the global uh, verifications. And there is a lot of emphasis, which is in line with what, what happens in um, in southern Europe and in, uh, uh, if you like, high seismicity zones of uh, Europe, uh, no linear static analysis has gained uh, really a lot of um, a lot of uh, popularity, if I may say so. There are resistant models for the various failure modes. Let me skip the uh, details. And of course, something which is really specific, uh, particularly to measuring, there is um, a, a significant and detailed guidance. What are you doing with regard to the out of plane um, failure modes, uh, which can be quite critical in the case of um, in the case of measuring structures? So uh, we are invoking principles of basically of limit analysis to carry out these um, these verifications. And there is an Annex D, which is really some kind of encyclopedia for existing major structures. It is giving important information for different types of measure. And this is just a small part of the a big table that it is included uh, there. And there is also some information from the flow response uh, spectra, complementary to the one that you can find in part one, two, which is for the uh, specifically for the verification of the local out of plane mechanism. And the last one is bridges. It is a completely uh, new section. The idea is that in this um, clause, we are providing all the additional information, information additional to what you will find in all the other uh, clauses regarding uh, things like uh, uh, resistance of concrete members or resistance of uh, composite uh, steel, uh, uh, steel members and um, uh, so on. And, uh, uh, the type of verification, of course, that uh, of intervention that you will uh, um, uh, foresee for bridges is a seismic abrading, either through seismic isolation or through the proper strengthening, which, by the way, is called up upgrading now, not um, not um, uh, strengthening. There are some innovation. There are um, um, the, we're distinguishing five different bridge uh, components. There is a three-step approach, collection of information, simulated design, and detailed survey and investigation. And last but not least, there is a clearly different treatment of the two big different categories of bridges that we can have. One is the a typical type of, for example, an underpass um, a bridge, um, a single span frame to box type uh, bridge, which uh, were in the interaction with the surrounding soil is very, very important. And the, the other cases, well, practically all the other cases, bridges with more spans and, um, and so on. And ju just to finish this one, this is the uh, uh, treatment of the NDP some, uh, within the mandate of our um, uh, of our uh, project team and all project team was to suggest specific values also for the uh, nationally determined parameters, that's the NTPs and nationally determined parameters. There are not too many in our part. It is a uh, one for the limit stage to be verified, the return periods or performance factor, the value of K2, which is uh, uh, required for gamma D, the um, material related safety factor, the description of the operationality limit stage and the reference values for the regional measure types. Uh, I went very quickly, as you have seen, uh, try to to, uh, uh, to keep uh, more or less within the available time, but uh, please uh, uh, don't, <laughs> uh, don't be disappointed because all the uh, points that I have raised, hopefully they will be raised by my colleagues when they present in more detail this interesting uh, part. And these are some of the nice flowchairs that we have. So many thanks for your kind attention. And um, if there is time, we may field a couple of um, questions, if any. Thank you, Professor Kapos. Um, we did receive five questions, but as we are very, very short on time, I would prefer to move on to the next presentation. And then eventually, if we have May I, um, I, mean, I should have been even briefer, but <laughs> anyway. perhaps perhaps when you present again, if we, we are more yeah. on schedule, we can, we'll we can come we'll back see. to these. Okay. Thank you.